Demons are real. This is a subject that we read about. Some of us don't understand it. Some of us like to run away from it. And this is the subject of demons. Just like angels are real beings, demons are also real. Demons are everywhere just like the angels are everywhere too. One thing you should know about them that is important is that they are the opposite of the angels. This is like good and bad, the same way they are different. You can never see a demon doing good things. I know many of us might argue that demons can help people or do good things. Truly some people have been possessed by demons and they can speak true things. They can predict the future, and they can identify dangers. We have seen this in the Bible and it is happening in the world today. It is unfortunate that many Christians don't want to accept what the Bible says about demons and demonic activity. There is a real confrontation between the kingdom of heaven and the forces of darkness. If you open up the four Gospels time and time again, we see our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, overpowering and exercising his authority over any demon, over any devil, and over any unclean spirit. Jesus is superior to all evil spirits. Jesus did not tiptoe around the subject of demons or avoid it like a lot of churches do now. He confronted them head on. There was a testimony I heard of a preacher who has now gone to be with the Lord. He spoke of how in a town local to him there was a very strange story published in a local newspaper. It spoke of a family whose home would have different objects thrown against their house. Bricks, stones, tools and sand, whatever was around the house was used to be thrown against the house. But every time the house would be hit by these stones, no one was outside or around. The man of the house would run out to check if anyone was there, but no one was there. Whatever threw these stones did not stay outside the house but made its way inside. The whole family would witness objects moving and no one carrying them around. Chairs levitating, turning upside down and other objects as well. One of the first occasions this happened, the whole family left the home to stay at a hotel. Whenever they were at the hotel, nothing would happen. They would live a normal life without experiencing any demonic activity. They had to return home because of financial reasons. After a week they went back to their home and nothing happened for the first few days. But then one night, the mother and one of the children saw shadows literally walking through the walls. At this point the family was desperate and a friend connected them with this pastor. The pastor came over and led them in a sinner's prayer and they gave their life to Christ. The demonic manifestation stopped for a period of time, however, the family was adamant on leaving the house. So eventually the family moved into a new home, and the week they moved into a new home everything started up again and it got worse. They would hear music in the house playing loudly at 3am. It would wake them all up, and they would not know where it is coming from. Music blasting but there was no source of the music. They would go to sleep at night to wake up and find their bedrooms rearranged in a mess. Before only the mother and one of the children would see the shadow figures walking around, now all of them saw the shadow figures appearing and disappearing. It was as if the demon spirits had come back with a vengeance. 
The aggression frequency of the demon activity in their house had increased dramatically. It was as if the demons that were there had gone to collect other demons more evil than them. So they called the pastor, and he sat down with them and began to try to locate the root cause of all of this. After some investigation, the pastor pinpointed the date it all started. All of this started after they came back from a holiday. The pastor asked them, did you bring anything back from your holiday? And they answered yes. And one of the things they brought back was a small statue of a small god they put in their back garden. The pastor knew instantly that this was the source of their problem. He could tell it was an occult stature. He took it along with the father of the house and destroyed it at the disposal unit far away from their house. They returned home and blessed their new home, and they never had any more demonic experiences. Demons are a reality in the Bible, and they are also a reality in our society. We cannot afford to be ignorant of these things called demons. We must not be naive to the ways they work. They are not friends. They are enemies that you must fight always. There is no such thing as a friendly demon. There is no such thing as a friendly ghost. There is no such thing as a good demon. Demons don't make peace with believers. They don't seek peace for the believers. You need to know your stand. You need to know how they attack. You need to know the things they do. I am a Bible believer. I believe every single word in this book and the Bible told you and me that demons are real. You cannot fight an enemy that you refuse to acknowledge its existence. The Bible did not tell us to run from them or to shy away from them. Mark 16 verse 17 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. The verse does not say in my name you shall be scared of devils or you shall ignore them as if they don't exist. It says in my name shall they cast out devils. God's power is greater than the devil's power. You don't have to be afraid of the devil and his demons. You don't have to run away in fear. Jesus said, the gates of hell cannot prevail against his church. Don't live in fear. It doesn't matter what the devil does. God can do more. And it doesn't matter how many demons come. God can deliver you. Satan wants people to believe that demons don't exist so they can easily be used. The devil wants the world to be ignorant of demons so that they will have access to every life. Unfortunately, many Christians don't know the kind of power they have to command the demons to leave them. We run up and down looking for who will help us when Jesus already collected the authority in heaven and earth and then gave it to us. It is ignorance that will make you as a Christian allow the demons to take charge of your life. God has given you the authority. You are filled with power. Use it. The demons are happy that you don't know the power you carry in you. They are happy you cannot even command them with boldness. The Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And guess what happened after Jesus was given all the authority? Luke 10 verse 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. He gave everything to you. He did not withhold any of it. He gave it all to you. Demons know this. They will never want you to know the real deal, and they will always come after you. 
One of the ways they do this is by rolling out their doctrines, their teachings. They are teaching people the wrong things and the Bible made that clear. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Are you still doubting the existence of demons? The reason is that you are listening to their teachings. You are allowing yourself to be lured away from God. One of the greatest doctrines of devils is the doctrine they don't exist. You cannot fight an enemy which you don't acknowledge their existence. Don't allow them to blind you with their teachings that they don't exist. They are real and you must fight them all the time. Learn to open your mouth and command in the name of Jesus.